Hi, I'm Brad, and the madness is consuming me. I'm going to leave this tweet here. We'll talk about that another day. <laughs> yeah, so madness is a funny thing. You think you will find something and report something, and the madness will go away. But it turns out a lot of those things that you think are done, they come back and show you something else, a new mystery. There are many mysteries in this XR industry, and they speak to me loudly. The biggest whisper is, did you know you can support my madness by going to Patreon? Bradsmells.com slash Patreon? Yeah, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Now let's talk about human eye resolution. Sounds like a buzzword, right? But there is some research going into what is considered a human eye resolution. Obviously, the concept is in a XR headset, you would be able to have good visuals too similar to the real world, as if you weren't wearing anything on your face. So it's just everything's real. And there's a lot of different ways to reach that human eye resolution. But usually the most common ways is headsets are getting bigger and lens systems are getting bigger. The industry is constantly trying to figure out how to get that human eye resolution in a smaller form factor. I've talked about a lot of technologies that are kind of helpful for doing that, such as OLED micro displays or insane lens systems. I'm going to talk about one today because I found something really cool. You might remember last year at, in October, let me throw this away, Zuckerberg uh, showed off what he said was a human eye resolution prototype. This picture here. Obviously, it looked pretty normal like any other VR headset, and he called it an early prototype. It wasn't ginormous like a Pimax headset, and it just it looked pretty good on the outside if it was a real prototype of what he was saying. A lot of people, when that image came out, was trying to figure out what could have been this prototype. How did they reach that human eye resolution, which is around 60 pixels per degree? Just to do some easy math, let's just say that a headset comes with 4K per eye micro OLED displays at about 100 FOV. That's about a 40 degrees pixels per degree, which is still 20 off of that legendary 60 PPD. And that is like the best of the best micro OLED display you can get, possibly. Usually when you raise the resolution in these tiny, tiny, tiny form factor displays that are still next gen considerably for the whole mass producible market. Trying to get someone to create a 6,000 by 6,000 per eye micro display right now would be extraordinarily expensive. So companies have been trying to figure out how they can sort of cheat that with cheaper displays. I say cheaper, but that's kind of a joke. So I've been recently talking to directly to the legendary Samulia and Basti564. The first of those names you might recommend or remember when there was a Redditor saying I had a dream and was listing off all these exact specifications of what a Quest Pro or Cambria whatever headset would have inside. He was basically a data miner for the Quest 2 kernel. Basti564 is another one. Very well respected, very good at all that stuff, and I thank them both for finding this. When I was talking about the thing I was showing off earlier last week, you know, the render, I threw that 3D model down, Simulia was talking about something he found called Super Resolution in months prior. Now, I didn't hear anything about that, so I asked him to pull out those strings to see if I can take a look at them. And immediately, when, I, when he took them out, I saw something that just lit up a light bulb in my brain. Here are some strings here that he found in the kernel for the Quest 2 operating system. It was what they called a Super Res Client, which stands for Super Resolution. Now that doesn't really tell me anything that could be, well, I don't know, it could be an upscaling algorithm, it could be whatever, it could be anything like that. But the one thing I noticed in this list of strings, unable to get SR T-Rex plugin. T-Rex plugin? I've heard that one before. You might not have, but I have. See, if you remember, I was reporting a lot about a company known as Imagine Optics, a company that Valve funded to make very impressive holographic or liquid crystal polymer optic lens systems. And after I found out that Meta bought this company, I was searching everywhere, all over the internet, trying to figure out other companies that also do stuff that Imagine Optics does, which led me to a very popular company known as DigiLens. It's amazing how my obsessive research for Valve also helps me for every other company. Everything's connected.
Anyway, DigiLens is what's called a fabulous holographic waveguide or lens designer. They don't have their own factories, but they are an R&D powerhouse that creates the best waveguides, which are for like clear AR glasses and lens systems that can also be good for mixed reality or XR glasses that we're starting to see a lot more in the next coming soon years. In fact, this company is being funded a ton right now, like insane amounts of money from very large companies that are also very interested in this XR space. Just to name a few of the big companies that are funding DigiLens. Samsung Electronics, which is also rumored to be making a headset of some sort with some sort of holographic or hologram technology that was reported by Korea IT News. I made a long video about that and all my opinions on that. I think it's, DigiLens is related. They were funded also by Universal Display Company, which Universal Display Company is a huge licensor, is that a word? For OLED. Basically every OLED on the planet they have a pretty much a patent for and they get a lot of license money and develop a lot of new uh, sort of organic materials to make the OLEDs in every sort of device that we have much better. Corning, they're known for Gorilla Glass. All your phones with that super unbreakable glass. Well, they say it's unbreakable, then you drop it once and it breaks. Well, yeah, Corning's also very interested in DigiLens, which makes sense because if you are very good at making unbreakable glass, well... Obviously, Corning wants to get in the XR market. And finally, this is the most notable one in my opinion. They were funded heavily by Optimus Captable Management. Well, they're the company that runs all the money for Guartech. I've mentioned this name many times in my videos. They are basically the largest XR headset manufacturer in the world right now. They invested in very, very early, and they're also investing a lot into DigiLens. Guessing that they want to basically create the DigiLens technology in their own fabs. So yeah, a lot of interested parties are investing in this DigiLens company. And in August 2021, they showed off a new big advancement in their lens and waveguide technology. What was it called? It was called Transparent Resolution Expander, also known as T-Rex. Yeah. Now T-Rex technology is basically a switchable brag grating. What does that mean? Well, Bragg grating is basically a holographic material that's plastered onto a glass lens, but you can apply a voltage to it and it can switch between an on and off mode. These are the kind of lens technology these giant companies are looking into because, you know, Verifocal and all that stuff, those are another types of switchable Bragg gratings, basically. What's really cool about this lens system is it works at a super fast speed, 50 nanoseconds per switch. Turning the lens off and on, allows the direction of light to switch very fast. This technique is called wobulation. Wobble, wobble, wobble. That's basically what they're doing. They are wobbling the light super fast between all directions, usually in a circle, to give a perceived double resolution to the user, which is good for hiding gaps in between pixels, especially to completely remove the screen door effect. In fact, this wobulation technique is not new at all. It's actually been done for a while, but in very different ways. In rear projected TVs, basically a cheap TV with a rear projector projecting a screen, usually the lower end ones that wanted to reach something like a 1080p or 4K while having a lower resolution actual projector inside the TV, they would do this wobble effect mechanically to reach that resolution while keeping the entire internals cheap so they can also sell the device cheap at the market. Well, that idea is actually coming to XR and at least hopefully coming to devices very soon. In a Facebook 2020 research, this is actually publicly published, you can find that basically Facebook was doing that exact thing. They were using an OLED micro display, but attaching it to a mechanical actuator and basically doing the same thing. They were moving it back and forth in circles super fast, so when the user saw it, they couldn't see the actual uh, gap between the pixels. So the perceived resolution was double. This T-Rex lens system makes that system into what's called solid state. No moving parts, no extra heat, uh, very low power. It just seems like the best of all worlds. So you might wonder, well, Brad, how do you know that this T-Rex Super Res is related to this DigiLens? Well, again, I can't prove anything, but a lot of these strings relate to how d this T-Rex system works. In the strings, there is something called cannot find multi-view input layer for super resolution. And in the proprietary DigiLens software, 
Basically, they have to render two frames or views at the same time and overlay them on top of each other to get that double super resolution. And this Super Res or T-Rex plugin is already infesting a lot of different systems in the rendering pipeline for the Quest OS. So even though this, this might be for a prototype of some sort, someone in Facebook Reality Labs or Meta Reality Labs is implementing this a lot in some really serious prototypes. So again, let's go back to that human eye resolution thing. So human eye resolution is 60 pixels per degree, right? Well, if you remember many videos, I've talked about the concept of a Seabright headset where they were testing a version of Cambria with 3K per eye micro OLED displays. So that already 3K per eye sounds really good, right? But what if they want to double that resolution without getting more pixels in that display? Well, what if they applied this T-Rex resolution expander to those? Again, doing some easy math, 3K per eye at 100 degree FOV, which is similar to the resolution, or I should say FOV, of Quest, and what apparently is reportedly coming out in the next headset from Meta, that would be about a 30 pixel per degree. But if you effectively visually double that resolution at that FOV, you get the human eye resolution of 60 pixels per degree. So when again, when I look at that prototype Zuckerberg's wearing, it's not ginormous. Again, it's an early prototype. I can't help but imagine they are doing that. The system I explained this entire video, they are very interested in this concept of solid state wobulation to double effective resolution to get human eye resolution. Imagine when they are competing with the likes of Apple and they can state that their mixed reality headset has a human eye resolution optically. That would be very impressive. And this is where the conspiracies really come in. Again, I announced that DigiLens announced that T-Rex system pretty much middle of last year, right? And they had for a few months, they had the T-Rex system listed on their website. They wanted people interested in it so that they can license it. Well, the strange thing is, around the same time this T-Rex plugin system became seriously put in all the Quest OS firmware, the T-Rex part of the DigiLens website disappeared completely. There are some tidbits around here with some old videos and stuff and some of the old news articles, but DigiLens does not advertise this T-Rex expander anymore. So my conspiracy hat put on makes me think that Facebook is so interested in this technology to the point where they're implementing it deeply into systems for prototypes to the point where they might have signed an exclusivity licensing agreement with DigiLens. Yeah, this was my weekend. My weekend has been researching this, not because I'm crazy, okay, a little bit because of that, but because this is such a fascinating technology and seeing some strings related to this that I can't help but think, Man, we're really going to see some amazing advances pretty soon, I'd say. DigiLands was pretty confident that this T-Rex system was already possible for mass production, given the right partner available. Here's also a giant log that Basti was able to kind of recreate to get the entire T-Rex systems to show how deep it is and all the different other systems that the Quest 2 needs. And yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's so cool. It's so freaking crazily cool. Anyway, that's all I have to say for this time. I want to thank all of my $25 up Patreon people here. They are very, I'm very thankful. Um, yeah. And about that tweet at the beginning, we'll, we'll talk about that soon. <laughs> it's been a crazy weekend, that's all I can say. Bye!